What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here and today I'm going to be bringing you a surprisingly highly requested decklist profile which is going to be a just updated blue green Imperial Jermon decklist profile. I was posting about the red purple Imperial Jermon list. People were not interested in that. We are just interested in the blue green Imperial. So this is a deck that never really dies for me or my teammates on Team Icewall. This is frequently in our testing sessions and getting updated so this is a list that is something that i'm very comfortable with and that i'm around quite a lot so if you are interested in the blue green imperial in the ex3 format or going into bt11 this is a pretty good build for you so as always let's go ahead and get on into it all right so starting off with the digitama we are going to be playing the four demi vimon and then one upamon demi vimon is fairly straightforward we are going to be swinging with jamming a lot that's kind of our main mechanic that we are looking for so being able to draw off of it is very nice when you dna digivolve it does reset so you can get multiple draws off of this so demi vimon very good and then i still want a fifth egg just because you want to stay as aggressive as possible you want to continue to promote as much as you can um, so that way you can just keep cycling into the end game versus slower matchups and upamon is just a another good draw card i think it's just the next best egg so we're just gonna play four and one fairly standard now getting on to the rookies we'll start off with the vmon we have four of the starter deck nine vmon our best searcher vmon just gonna be able to reveal three grab a free this really is important for being able to find things like x vmon and stingmon and Pyildramon. so want to max this out then we got three of the EX1 Vmon because of the memory gain. A lot of unsuspending in this deck, whether that be through Pyildramon, Fighter Mode, or through Davis Ken. And we also have Magnamon, so there is multiple ways to gain this memory, and it's just very nice. It's like a Hammer Spark Inheritable, so love it. Then we got two Jamming Vmon, just because we do have a decent amount of armors, and also, of course, the Demi Vmon eggs. And normally, I wasn't a big fan of the Jamming Vmon in the past metagames, but when I added more armor, with the Magnamons and just in the current build a stack metagame this card feels a lot better so I just wanted to play it at two just to get that early cycle this way if you miss something like your XV Mon early you can still promote get some swings in get some draw and if it survives you can continue swinging with jamming so big fan of the Vmon and then the last of the Vmons is going to be one of the BT8 Vmon, which is just essentially our Mega Death emergency button, or if we really need to find Pyildramon, but I kind of just see this as you need Mega Death, so you play this out to search it, but it does hit your Pyildramons, it hits your Magnamons, it'll hit things like Davis and Ken, so it is still very versatile, but I don't think it's better than the other Vmon, so I just play it as one of. And then to finish off the rookies, we are going to be playing two Siakomon and one Madoki. I really like Siakomon in this build because there is a lot of Digivolution reduction going on with the Digisorption in Bloomlordmon. You also have Jessmon, and then also we've been testing this versus the BT11 Black War Greymon. And then that build, they do have the BT11 Greymon X Antibody, which will reduce there. So really like the Siakomon and the Madoki. I think it goes without mentioning of how good it is. I am fairly comfortable with playing one Madoki in Imperial. We've been doing it for quite a while now. It's just that card where you don't necessarily need it to stick to be annoying. You just need to play it on that one crucial turn where it really sets them back or just puts you, gives you that one extra turn that you need to set up. So I don't think it's a big deal one Madoki, but I do like the Siakomons. If you don't like the Siakomons as much, you could cut them for more Vmons. You could cut one for a Madoki, make another Vmon, whatever you want. But I do think Siakomon is very good just because Bloom Lordmon can be a little bit of a weird matchup for this deck. Um, as to where Siakomon just gives you way more time to be able to get your combo going and just start swinging with jamming. And then before they can go for their big turn where they're going to be able to swing swing for with bloom lord going to another bloom lord or going to hydra you already have them down to one or zero security and then you can go for game now moving on into the champions the standard the 4x vmon and the 4 stingmon we just need these it's the main source of the combo need the jamming inheritable for your pyildramons for all that draw so that way you can just uh, not go down in security and then the stingmon of course we can play this for three if we have a blue digimon and then we have the inheritable of when attacking draw one that is not once per turn so it works very well with the unsuspending effects of things like pyildramon now for our armors, we have two Magnamon and one Ragermon, and we have the Magnamons in here because we are also playing Magnamon X, which isn't too big of a spoiler because I put it in the thumbnail, but this card is just so strong in this metagame. When people want to swing for these big checks with like piercing, you can block an armor purge, but I just think Magnamon X works really well with this build because it gives you a secondary option to go by. Raidermon, I don't think there's too much to say. This gives you the blue green, so it's dual color, helps with Davis Ken, it can suspend something, but it's also an armor, so that way if you DNA with this and then go into the Magnamon on top of your ultimate, uh, the Magnamon X, you could still be able to redirect because you have this armor form. 
And then to finish off the champions, we are going to have one Parasormon, which honestly is kind of mid. It's just there to be another three drop green. So that way, if they have something that can makes us, you can't reduce your play cost and you can't play Stingmon for three or you don't have a Stingmon, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility, but it does feel slightly mid. So if you wanted to cut it for another Ragermon or even another Magnemon, you could, but I don't think it's terrible, but it just doesn't feel as good as all the other champions. It just kind of gives you a little bit more consistency to try to get up into your Pyeldramon. Ultimate's going to be fairly standard from what I've ran in the past, and this is also going to be kind of where a difference is between the team. I've always been really big on the two Chimera, especially with double Magnemon in the build, because you can get that 4k minus plus the 4k. You can get Magnemon under, so when you go into Dragon Mode, you can play for free, but my teammates are also big fans of one Chimera and one Dino Beamon, and so you could play that as well. I think once Alphamon got kind of, not necessarily removed from the metagame, because it just got second, but the fact that it was Heavily neutered with that Doro Greymon. Um, I don't know if you need Pyeldramon as or Dino Beamon as much as to where Chimeramon I feel like is very strong right now because there's a lot of decks that can go wide and so being able to hit them is very nice. Or just being able to have an ultimate that can be 12k by having the four colors to swing over your opponent um, has come up quite a bit. So I like the Chimeramon, but you could also go one Chimera, one Dino B. Now into the Mega is going to be fairly standard with the two Dragon Mode and the two Fighter Mode. I have seen people going down in the Fighter Mode, down to one, and I don't like it as much. My teammate Jesse did take that to the Texas Regionals, I believe, and only played the one Fighter Mode. And we he didn't really like it, and then testing, it didn't really feel as good either. So I still like the two Fighter Mode just because of how powerful it is. Being able to bounce, being able to have more swing unsuspending effects just helps you be so aggressive. And then we're also playing the one Magnemon X because this card just really supplements the deck very well, I feel like. It gives you another direction to play because sometimes if you miss your X Vmon or you miss your Stingmon, then you can start to fall really far behind. But with the Magnemon X, you could just kind of go for this Magnemon um, package. Now, obviously, the two-in-one isn't the most consistent of builds but we do have a good amount of search to be able to find the card so it hasn't felt that inconsistent but also it's not supposed to be based around the magnamon x we've seen other imperial builds that are much more focused on the magnamon x antibody as to where i just think it's a nice little supplement package that doesn't take anything away from the main deck but really just gives to it so i like the one magnamon x but that is going to do it for the digimon Next up are the Tamers, and again, going to be fairly standard. These haven't really changed since the release in BT8, and that's going to be 3 Davis and 2 Davis Ken. Some people like the 3 Davis Ken. I think it is way too clunky. Um, a lot of the times you don't really want to play your Tamers for 4. The only thing is Davis, you can kind of justify it because you can double hit off Davis so much with this deck that it can be kind of a good searcher as to where Davis and Ken. Um, a lot of the times you want it to come out of security or you can play one down, but the second and third one feel a little more clunky to play out of hand just because it costs 4. You want to be using that memory to Digivolve up or be able to play things like Mega Death or uh, Blue Memory Boost, whatever you need. The Davis and Ken, I feel like, just isn't as good. So I put it as a 2 of. The memory gain is nice, but you have to keep in mind that a lot of times you are going to be gaining one memory off of each of these. You're not always going to have the green source and the blue source. And if you have this out and have a green source out and a blue source in the back, people are going to prioritize to get rid of that green source so you aren't gaining all that memory. So Davis Ken is broken when it's broken, and sometimes it's just a little bit mid. Um, I definitely think you play no less than 2 because it's still very stable to the deck, but that's I'm just saying that's why I play 2 over 3. Um, I think it just can be a little bit clunky and it's not as strong as Davis and so I prefer Davis to be the three of. Now moving on into the options, three Megadeth, the best option in the deck because this is just, Megadeth is so insane. Unless you're playing against things that are like Greymon X Antibody, Megadeth is so insanely powerful and so when to play it at three, four does feel a little bit too clunky because um, if you get a couple in your hand, it can feel really bad. Of course, you'd like to see a couple in your security, but you can't always control that. So three is just a very good consistency number. Then for memory gain cards, uh, playing two spark and one blue memory boost was playing three spark previously, but I had cut one out for the next card that we're going to go over, but still think these are very standard. You want to be able to gain memory as much as possible so you can extend your turns. You do have a lot of other memory gain in the deck through things like the EX1 Vmon, Davis and Ken. Um, those are going to help you out to be able to extend your turns. Blue memory boost, I think is more so just a half searcher. I think this could very much just be a third hammer spark and be very much the same, but it's a half searcher, half spark. It's not as immediate because you have to play it out for three and then next turn or 
future turns you can pop it to gain the memory so it's not as immediate as spark but it is also a search card so like the two spark and the one memory boost and then the card that i cut for it is one of the sorai and this card is mostly for the black or Greymon or Greymon x antibody style decks because they can be very annoying because a lot of the times they will set up these big blocker stacks that you can't get through and the only way to get through them is through the mega death and so this card does help get through some of the sources so that way you they can't go for it it can also sometimes get rid of the blocker source depending on what their stack is and so this can be very nice getting rid of their Greymon x antibody sets up for mega death this is also just good versus other random matchups like bloom lord um you can strip sources and then just have a couple digimon that can attack and it's it's all right um i don't know if it's completely necessary but we have come to the conclusion that we think it's good at one of i don't think it's really better as another card besides maybe spark but this just helps in your worst matchup and so i think it's worth teching in at least as a one of but there's not too much to say about it i think this card was highly anticipated coming into the set because of its power level and you're going to see a lot of decks playing it i just think it's better as a splash in here than a main card and then for the last two cards of the list are going to be the one ofs the hpd and the ice wall and these again are just Fairly standard. Shout out Team Ice Wall. You want to be able to set this up. And then HPD is just so insane in this deck because we have uh, multiple green ultimates. All of our ultimates should be green theoretically with the Chimeramon gaining the green, which allows us to get up into our dragon modes for free to then play out the sources, DNA up again, go up into fighter mode. We all know how the combo goes. So HPD very crucial, but that is going to be the list. Like I said, really not too much has changed since BT-8. Um, this is a deck that I don't think will change too much till we get BT-12 with the new wave of support. But again, a lot of people wanted to see what we were playing. There was a couple small changes with the Magnamon X and the Sorai and stuff. But if you are looking to play Blue Green Imperial, this deck has been heavily heavily tested by team ice wall me and all my close friends and so we can definitely vouch for this deck so if you're looking for a list i'd recommend starting with here not saying it's perfect you might find some changes that suit you a little bit better but i think the core of it will really help you out starting off with this deck so with that being said be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see some more digimon content and i hope you have a fantastic day i will catch you next time peace out